My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We are in about the halfway point of Advent, this beautiful but very brief liturgical season. We're right in the thick of it, in this second week of Advent, rounding towards the third Sunday of Advent. And during this time of preparation for the coming of Jesus, we have been accompanied by guides, and we need these guides to walk with us on the journey to Bethlehem. We need those wise souls who can help to prepare us and to lead us towards the goal of Christmas. I think obviously the most important guide in Advent is Our Lady. We accompany her in these final weeks of her pregnancy. Of course, Joseph comes along with Our Lady to hold our hands and to accompany us. Mary and Joseph are guides for Advent. But also we could think that Isaiah is a great guide, that prophet of the Old Testament who we are reading almost every day in Advent. But there's another guide that we can focus on today, and that is John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who is definitely a protagonist of Advent because he is the precursor for the Messiah. He goes before the Lord and prepares his way, and that's the point of Advent. Jesus, you had a very special relationship with John, and it makes sense because John was your cousin. He was your kin. And even before you were born, you connected with John. We can think of that moment in the visitation when John dances in the womb of Elizabeth when he senses that you, Jesus, are near. It's beautiful to think that even before you were born, you and your cousin John bonded in that moment. John rejoiced in your presence. And you also rejoice when you think of John. Today's gospel is taken from the, from the gospel of Matthew, and we see how you, Jesus, have high praise for John the Baptist. We read, Jesus said to the crowds, Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. All the prophets and the law prophesied up to the time of John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, the one who is to come. Whoever as hears ought to hear. Jesus, there's a lot in this praise that you have of John the Baptist that we could unpackage or unpack here. But I thought we could focus on this specific phrase that is quite mysterious, quite enigmatic. And that is this. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. In another translation, we read, the violent bear it away. The violent bear the kingdom of heaven away. Maybe when we hear this phrase, we think of Flannery O'Connor. Have you heard of this woman, Flannery O'Connor? She was a writer from the American South in the last century, and she was famous for her short stories, short stories that were very graphic and sometimes quite violent. She also has two novels that were very successful, the second of which was called The Violent Bear It Away. Precisely this phrase of, of you, Jesus, when speaking of John the Baptist. What do we make of this strange and famously ambiguous phrase, the violent bear it away. Well, many have taken it to mean 
that the kingdom of God is attacked by violent people. We can think, for example, of those who killed John the Baptist. Right? John the Baptist was praised by Jesus, but then you know, eventually he was, he was martyred, he was killed. And so when reading these lines of, of yours, Lord, we can think of them almost as a prophecy that the kingdom of heaven will suffer violence and the violent are bearing it away. The violent are taking it by force, that they threaten to take away the kingdom of heaven, to destroy it. And this is certainly true in one sense. We can pray about this right now. The church suffers violence. It's hard for us to believe this, but the 20th century was the time in history that witnessed the greatest persecution of the church, even more so than we could think of those early years in Rome, where so many of our first brothers and sisters in the faith suffered death in the Colosseum. Well, from 1900 to 1999, there were more martyrs in the church than all other centuries put together. Obviously, there were intense years of violence in the times of the world wars and other wars. But there were many other, and there, there continue to be many martyrs for the church. Uh, often these deaths escape media attention, but they happen all the same. So much violence, so much bloodshed. And so, Jesus, we hear these words of yours, and we can interpret them in this way. The kingdom of heaven is threatened by the violent who bear it away, who can carry the kingdom of heaven away if we're not careful. But, Jesus, could it be that you meant this expression in the opposite sense? After all, you're in the middle of praising John the Baptist. Rather than referring to his future death as a martyr, maybe you're referring to his present witness of faith and love. So we could interpret the phrase, and the violent bear it away, in the opposite sense, as a word of praise to the spiritually violent who manage to get into the kingdom, who, who are able to, to get into the kingdom, to enter the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent are taking it by force. They're seizing the kingdom. I think Flannery O'Connor herself would side with this latter group. In one of her letters, she wrote to a friend St. Thomas's gloss on this verse is that the violent that Christ is here talking about represent those souls, those ascetics, those mystics, who strain against mere nature. St. Augustine concurs. And this mere nature that St. Thomas is referring to, St. Augustine, Flannery O'Connor, is that fallen nature that each of us has. And John the Baptist perhaps is praised because he is spiritually violent against his sinful nature. We can remember that John the Baptist, as a young man, goes out into the desert. He practices discipline, right? He, he feeds on locusts and honey. He wears camel skins, right? He is expressing this aspect of our spiritual life, which is to go to go against our inclinations, to go against our sinful tendencies, to do violence, as it were, to the old man within us, our fallen nature, killing off that old soul, that selfish soul within us, so that we can bring about the new woman or new man in Christ. Well, Advent is a time to make straight the way of the Lord, Every valley needs to be filled in, every mountain made low. That's some pretty, some, some pretty hefty land moving that John the Baptist is inviting us to. It's a violent intervention in nature to make a highway for our God. Well, Jesus, where we most want to make this highway is in our soul. We want you to enter our soul more fully. And in order to do that, we may, like John the Baptist, have to be spiritually violent. Violent in, in a spiritual sense, not a physical sense. 
The kingdom of heaven is taken by force by those who are willing to take it by force. And we can ask Our Lady that she might help us to have this resolve, this true determination to be a saint, to be willing to go against our tendencies so that we might truly be new men and women in Christ. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.